In this lecture, we'll explore motherboards. Computers consist of several main functional units, and these include the CPU, the central processor, memory, and input-output devices. The central processor performs the basic arithmetic and logic, the memory stores programs and data, is a chipset that does the I.O. and routes data to the computer's keyboard, screen, and hard drive. All of these components sit on a motherboard. So the motherboard is the largest component in terms of the size in the computer. It's what holds everything together and lets all these other components talk to each other via different buses. So the picture that you're seeing here, this is one of the earliest motherboards that was created by IBM in the 80s. So this is an AT form factor. AT is advanced technology. So you can see a lot of different chips and my processors and microprocessors and it looks really busy here. So let's look at some of the other types of motherboards. So these are the popular form factors. You have the AT which you just saw, then there is an ATX which is the advanced technology extended, the MATX which is the micro ATX, the ITX which is the information technology extended. Then you have the Nano ITX and the Pico ITX. So these are all different sizes and the smaller, the micro ATX is what would be usually in a laptop and the mini, nano and the pico would be in even smaller devices like maybe a netbook or a really small ultra portable. Now in terms of the size, the standard full size ATX form factor comes in at 12 by 9.6 inches which is the most popular size that you would see in most PCs. The micro ATX is 9 by 7.5 inches and the mini ITX is 6.7 by 6.7 inches. What are the components on the motherboard? So the most popular standard components are the CPU socket. So this is where the CPU goes in. You have multiple slots for the RAM and you have support for the mass storage devices. So that's an SATA slot that you can see here. In terms of the CPU sockets, there are different types of sockets. Now when you're choosing a motherboard, you need to make sure that you have the correct motherboard depending on what type of processor you're going to use. So you have to decide the processor beforehand. That's the most important component in a computer. So once you have decided that whether you want to use an Intel or an AMD, a motherboard made for Intel processors is not going to support AMD and vice versa. And even if you did choose to go for Intel, let's say, then you'll still need to make sure which processor you're going to use and how many pins it has and which type it is in order to get the correct motherboard. So these are some of the popular ones starting from the earliest ones. The socket A was one of the earliest ones with 462 pins and it supported Pentium 3, Celeron and AMD processors. So socket A is the one exception where you could install an AMD and an Intel processor because way back Intel and AMD had an agreement and a contract and that's when they were both creating the same type of CPUs pin for pin so you could just use the same motherboard and swap the CPUs but this was way way back and that's not gonna be you know you're probably not gonna encounter this and socket 378 this is mostly for P4 Pentium 4 this is 478 pins socket T is for the the later Pentium D and the Celeron D as well as the Core 2 Quad and the Core 2 Dios. The socket 939, this is made specifically for AMD processors. So this is for the AMD Athlon 64, Athlon 64 and other AMD processors which, which are using the pin grid array. The socket AM3 and the, and the LGA 1156, so these are the current sockets that uh, you'd see in motherboards. The AM3 is for the latest AMD processors and the LGA 1156 is for the Intel Core processors. This is for i3, i5 and i7. Now in addition to the standard components, there are other components that are on the motherboard. So these can vary from motherboard to motherboard and also depending on how much you're paying, which brand you're buying, 
these are more like additional features and it also depends on what size and what form factor you're buying so if you're buying a smaller size motherboard then you'll find fewer ports and if you're buying a larger more expensive motherboard then you'll find a full featured motherboard but you also have to un remember that the bigger motherboards with a lot of features are also going to be more power hungry so they will take a lot more power so these are some of the common ones are the usb ports the ps2 port is for a keyboard and mice for the the older generation the the dual link dvi and the hdmi are for video they could be an optical digital audio port esata connector which is for external hard drives which are not really that popular anymore because of usb 3.0 and you have the the lan which is the rj45 and then you have different audio plugs here so there are a whole bunch of audio plugs here which is for the left right and the microphone and so on and the line in and such so some of the so some of the motherboards even support wi-fi and they might even have a built-in a video card or a braid controller as well the chipset is the second most important component on the motherboard so this is right after the cpu so the chipset is, sits really close to the CPU and it also gets really hot. So it's usually hidden underneath a heatsink, just like the CPU. The chipset communicates directly with the CPU and it used to be broken down into two separate chips, the North Bridge and the South Bridge. And those chips were communicating with the other components on the motherboard like RAM, I.O. devices, keyboards, and so on and all of those funnel through the the chipset and then the chipset communicates with the with the cpu so that speeds up the process because the the communication speed of all these other components are very very slow compared to the cpu's clock speed we go into a lot more depth about the chipset in uh, in the firmware lecture so here we're going to be pretty brief so these are the different components that the chipset would usually be controlling. So this is for the latest generation of Intel core processors. So this is the 8th and 9th generation of the, the core processors like uh, i3, i5, i7 and i9. So you can see at the top, so that's the processor. And then there is the Intel Z390 chipset. So you can see from the chipset on the right hand side, it supports the it supports memory, high definition audio, sound, rapid storage with RAID if you have the right components, PCI Express storage, wireless card, and Bluetooth. That's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Additional wireless adapter, uh, the the firmware. And on the left hand side, you can see that there are up to twenty four PCI Express three point oh. 6 SATA 6 gigabytes per second ports this is for hard drives SATA ports up to 6 USB 3.1 generation 2 ports up to 10 USB 3.1 generation 1 ports or 14 USB 2 ports and then you also have the ethernet which is the 10 100 and the standard gigabit ethernet with the mac and uh, the ethernet connection now you can also see that uh, the CPU itself controls some of the things like its own cache and uh, you can see that the, the graphics, the video card is integrated inside the CPU in this case and not on the motherboard or on the chipset. The CPU also directly communicates with the RAM so that doesn't go through the, the chipset anymore. You can also see the, the lanes of PCI Express. So we'll go into this in a bit more depth. So we can see that the PCI Express 3.0, you have one 16 lanes slot for a graphics card or two eight lanes PCI Express 3 or one eight and two four lanes PCI Express graphics and Intel SSD. So this is for the, the video card. You can split depending on the, if you have the latest and greatest video card, 
then that will be that can directly communicate with the CPU and that reduces the the lag of any bus that uh, that these need to go through so you can see the architecture further here so on the left hand side you can see what it actually looks like you have the north bridge and the south bridge so both of them are enclosed now inside the chipset but in terms of what's actually happening it's still the same concept so typically the front side bus this is part of the motherboard and this connects the the processor to the main memory and then you have the backside bus and this connects the processor to the cache so that's the those are the two things that you can see on the north bridge side and on the south bridge side you have the 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 IO connectors and so on. So you can see on the right hand side the different computer buses. So you can see the front side bus. So, so the front side bus connects the, the processor to the main memory and then the back side bus connects the processor to the cache. That's usually how it goes and this is actually showing an AGP bus which is not very really popular anymore but you'll see them in slightly older machines so AGP was a separate port instead of the PCI ports that are common now and the PCIe ports the AGP port was purely for a video card and that allowed a much faster connection to the CPU so when someone is talking about the system bus then they're talking about the front side bus so that's basically what connects the processor and the main memory and then in addition to that there is an expansion bus so this allows the processor to communicate with peripherals these peripherals might be outside the system and they need to connect through a port on an adapter so this is an this is an expansion card that you need to put into a slot on the motherboard and this slot connects to the expansion bus which connects to the processor so in terms of the expansion slots the older, more popular ones are the PCI and the mini PCI. The PCI expansion slot used to be 32 bits and 33 megahertz. And that used to be the common one for a very long time. And it was pretty universal. So you can, so you can plug in a video card on there or a sound card, wireless adapter if you need to, or um, a RAID controller or any sort of different type of card would be able to plug into the PCI and uh, the PCI slot would be able to control the, the speed of the clock make sure that it's compatible with the CPU because there are different because there are different types of clocks running all over the system so the CPU has its own clock the motherboard has a clock and the, the RAM has a clock and every processor has a clock so in order for all of these to communicate with each other, the clocks all need to be running at the same speed or they need to be running in sync. But this is, so the chipset and these buses, they allow you to convert or make sure that components are on the same clock speed as well. Now the PCI Express. So this is still PCI, but it has a point-to-point -point direct connection instead of a shared parallel communication. So this is able to directly connect in 32 bits directly to the CPU. So this was sort of a breakthrough. In addition to that, it also communicates in pairs of wires. So one for each side, and this is called a lane. So a pair of wires is called a lane. One way is to go to the CPU and the other wire is to get data from the CPU. Now, in addition to it being able to communicate directly, you can have up to 16 lanes to the CPU and each lane can go up to 16 GTPS. So this is the giga transfers per second. So that's the, the metric that they use. So if you, so depending on the card, so some cards are only 1x, some are 4x, 8x and 16x. The 16x means that it supports the 16 lanes. So if you buy a brand new, let's say NVIDIA 2080 Ti video card, you'll see that it'll say that it's a 16, it'll say that it's a PCIe 16 lane card. So that can communicate at 16 times 16 GTPS in theory. But in practice, it's uh, the bandwidth is usually around 80 gigabits per second. 
So that's what the, the GTP is. And the picture on the right shows you how to actually install the card. So that's the motherboard. You can see the expansion slot. And on the expansion card, you can see the port. So that's where you'd usually plug in your monitor cable, your HDMI or your display port cable that goes into the monitor if it's a video card. Now let's briefly take a look at some of the components here. So this is a typical motherboard. You can see that it's, it's an Asus motherboard. So going from the top, so first we can identify that there is a CPU socket and we can see that there is the north bridge and the south bridge. Those are the two chips here and you can see that there are heat sinks on both of them. See that there is the, the CMOS battery at the bottom. Going So going clockwise from the bottom, you can see the CMOS battery, primary and secondary ATA RAID controllers. So that's for the hard drive RAID. System panel connectors. You have the game and MIDI header, the ATA connector, serial port, USB header, SATA controller, and then you have different jumpers that you need to make changes on the motherboard, or if you want to reset your CMOS, or if you want to change some other settings. You have the SATA right there, instead of the ATA. You have the 3094 connectors, headers, SPDIF, CD in, the onboard audio, two PCI Express slots, you can see the, the tiny one, and then you have three regular PCI slots. And you can see the back panel, which has the I.O. connectors of your, your speaker, mic, and uh, RJ45, and so on. And going down, you can see that there are four DIMM memory slots. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Witslabs. Success Certified.